Good afternoon. Today's the 23rd of April. It's um, a momentous day because I've just found out there's more ultra low emission zones on the way and this time they're not even in London. So watch out. As a lot of you who will be watching this video will know because I've made a lot of videos about the London ultra low emission zone. In fact, they're some of the most popular ones on my channel. Um, on the 8th of April, a uh, new zone came into force within the boundary of the what was just the former London congestion charge zone, which operates 24 hours a day. And if you have a petrol car that does not meet, does not meet the Euro 6 emission standards, generally those made before 2006, or a diesel car that does not meet um, the Euro 6 um, emission standards, generally those registered before September 2015, then you have to pay an extra £11 um, on top of um, the congestion charge zone for driving within that area. This will be extended uh, to um, the boundary of the North and South Circular, 24 hours a day, with exactly the same emissions requirements um, in October 2021. As I've said before, um, there are some cars that were made before, if it's a petrol 2006 and diesel before 2015, um, that qualify um, for um, exemption. Um, but obviously it's worth checking if your car was registered before 1st January 2006 with the petrol or before... Um, I think it's the 1st of September 2015 for the diesel. A lot of other authorities around the country have got kind of jealous of this, although I don't know quite why. Um, probably to do with trying to help their cities meet future European Union emissions targets. And there's a whole load of other places that are planning on introducing similar or even more um, stringent legislation coming up right now. So this is an alphabetical list. Um, I'm only going to mention, first of all, ultra low emission zones, or in one case a zero emission zone, that is actually confirmed as to going into place. There are others as well that I'll mention at the end of the video, um, which haven't been 100% confirmed. But for now, this is what we've got so far. Bath, 2021. Um, it doesn't apply to private traffic, but um, if lorries, buses and taxis don't meet these emissions um, regulations, they're going to be charged. In the case of the heavy vehicles, it's going to be about £100 a day. Birmingham, by the end of 2019, they're going to have the same um, um, regulations as in London, which will be interesting. Um, the zone, I'm not sure if you've got boundaries of it. I'm, I'm sure you could find that out if you wanted to. Um, same sort of thing in Leeds, like Bath, that's... Um, lorries, buses and taxis only, and that's going to come into force um, from January 2020. Manchester, um, this is something that um, my friend Andy, who lives in Manchester, has been telling me about and saying this thing would never happen in Manchester. Well, it is about to happen. Um, and uh, it's not private traffic, it's lorries, buses and taxis only, and that's due in 2021. Um, Newcastle, same date, 2021 but potentially the same as London, that's still to be, yet to be confirmed. Oxford's by far the worst of all. They've had a low emission zone since 2014 for buses. Um, they were the first city to be pedestrianised in the centre, and the first city to have a park and ride scheme in about 1970, and they're going to be introduce the first ever zero emission zone in 2020, which will mean that within a small section of the city centre, only zero emission vehicles, that is electric vehicles and um, uh, plug-in hybrids that can do more than 10 miles on battery power alone, um, will be the only ones able to go within to a certain section of the city um, if it's a peak time. And this is the <laughs> most strange thing I think I've ever seen. I'm not saying particularly I disagree or agree with any of this. It's just interesting to kind of see how strict things are going to become. And, uh, you know, government recently got rid of the uh, grant for plug-in hybrid, which I think is a massive shame because this would really be very useful if you did have a plug-in hybrid car and you could go into the centre of Oxford and go about your business. You wouldn't have to worry about it. Um, the last one that I think is is confirmed, actually the last two, they're both in Yorkshire. Um, one is Sheffield for 20 or 2020 or 2021, um, that's lorries, 
bus and taxis only. And then York from 2020, it's actually buses only, that one. Others which have really um, still to be kind of determined um, are a whole list of these. Aberdeen, Bristol, Cambridge, Cardiff, Derby, Dundee, Edinburgh, Fareham, Glasgow, Reading, Slough and Warrington. I mean, uh, you'd expect places like uh, Edinburgh to be on there and uh, Cambridge as well. But places like Warrington and Fareham, which are relatively small places, they're not even the main kind of towns in their particular area. It's interesting that, you know, councils in these particular places are looking at doing that in the same way as the major cities. So what is this going to mean for people um, who are looking at buying a new car? Well, unfortunately, what it's going to mean is if, if you've got a, a diesel car before September 2015, unless it's one of these that was compliant with Euro 6 regulations early, well, which there were some, it means you're going to have to either pay the charge for going into some of these places, or you're going to get a, have to get a different car. Obviously, I can help you with that. I, I source cars to people. Um, if you've got a petrol car, um, if you've got a Euro 4 one, which is generally those before 2006, although I did recently source a car um, earlier this year that was a 2005 and was Euro 4 compliant, so some of them before 2006 are fine, um, then that's not, not a, really a worry. Um, but obviously it will lower values of a lot of the older cars. It's worth pointing out though that if you do have a really old car, um, something like um, I don't know, a Mark III Ford Cortina that was produced between 70 and 76. That is in the same category as um, all these historic cars that are on a 40 year rolling exemption. So because that's a pre-79 car, um, not only do you get a, you know, a, um, an exemption from MOT, exemption from road tax, although you have to register for those things, you also get an exemption from these ultra low emission zones, which is absolutely bizarre, isn't it? But that seems to be the case. So I hope you found that video um, interesting. Um, I thought that you know things would calm down a bit after the introduction of the ultra emission zone in London this month, but it looks like that's not the case. Um, but yes, please do feel free to subscribe to my channel for more updates on this and many other things. Um, please feel free to comment below and uh, like this video. Um, my website is www.lloydvehicleconsulting.co.uk. My Facebook page is facebook.com forward slash Lloyd Vehicle Consulting. If you wish for me to source a car for you, it could be one that's compliant with these zones or, or maybe not. Um, it depends what, you, <laughs> that's what you need. Um, then please do feel free to get in touch with me via the contact me page on my website. I'd love to do that. And uh, thank you very much indeed for watching.